to help us scratch that surface, we need to invite on one of our colleagues, our board members, the, uh, the, the nerd of our board of directors. She can explain that. Uh, but I think we should have uh, Karen come on. At Karen Teach, what do you think? Definitely have Karen come on. All right, here we go. Hi, guys. Karen, welcome to the pod. How you doing? I'm doing well. So uh, you, you uh, introduced me as the nerd. Yes, appreciate that. Um, I am the Northeast Regional Director of PAECT. And as an English teacher, it's my day job, I right away noticed the acronym N-E-R-D. And uh, I have been calling myself the nerd ever since. So that is That's, that is my yeah, role so that, now. The yeah. listeners need to know I'm not picking on you. That was something not, that you brought up to us. Not, yep. is, All right, good. I gave myself that name, so I wear it proudly. Oh, that's awesome. That's how you know you're from PA. You love your acronyms. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So we got uh, the KTI Summit. You know, you, what, what are your thoughts for the week before we jump into really tonight's topic? What, what do you got to say about KTI? It is life altering. The People ask me that all the time. Like, what's KTI? Right. Um, and I tell them it is a combination of the best professional development you'll ever receive slash the price is right. <laughs> slash a revival meeting and not in any sort of religious sense but just that you leave feeling so like refreshed and renewed and like yes i can do this i can change the world one child at a time and uh yeah it's it's it is it defies description but that is the best description i've ever been able to come up with so yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's that's, the, that's the week in a nutshell it is an awesome week what was that dom Pretty much just spot on. <laughs> yeah, it's, I hit that on that English pretty early on as people were like, oh, how was your week? I'm like, well, so been using that one since 2015. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I know in our meetings, you know, every year we have a, a different project spotlight, different things that we've done throughout the year. And and this year you were, uh, you were I, I want to say tasked, but I think you stepped up is more what uh, the appropriate way to say it is for our project this year. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what couple extra things we did for our KTIs this year? One of the things that we try to do with KTI is make sure that our attendees leave the summit feeling as though their week was valuable to them and is going to continue to be valuable to them as they return to whatever role they play in education. And we usually do that by having some sort of week-long project that they don't know is coming. So it's not as if they can sit at home and think about it and prepare and have any preconceived notions before they go in. We just kind of throw it at them the first night and by Friday, they they have something that they're going to do. And some of them follow through, some of them, it changes as it goes, but it's it's a, something to think about as they return back to their, their home schools. And this year's theme was P4, and that stood for personal, pillar, passion, project cannot put an English teacher in charge of something without the title being alliterative. It's just gonna happen. So the personal pillar passion project uh, was personal in the sense that we asked each person to think of something that they were passionate about in education or something that they felt needed to change either in education or in their own practice in education or something that they had always wanted to try that they'd never really prioritized because of the thousands of things that we are asked to do on, on a regular basis as educators. And to think about that in the sense of which of PAECT's four pillars did it relate to. If you are a longtime listener to this show, you may have heard the pillars before, but if not, they are lead, connect, advocate, and develop. And so our participants this year needed to think about those four concepts and what they wanted to do in terms of one of those concepts. So some people were thinking about how they could better develop colleagues if they are staff trainers or coaches. Some people were thinking about, wow, I'm now in this leadership role that I haven't been in before and how can I best serve my followers? And others were talking about how they they really wanna make better connections, especially coming off of the 2020, 2021 school year. Uh, connections were, really brought to the forefront and how important they can be. And then those people who were looking at ways to advocate either for their students or their colleagues or their schools or education in general. And so once they sort of found 
that part of P4, then we said, you know, it's got to be something you're passionate about. So we asked them to think you know, really deeply about what they what they really wanted. It didn't ha- it wasn't anything that we were going to judge them on. It wasn't anything that other people were going to evaluate on a rubric. This was not an SLO or anything like that. So that's we kind of let them go and we gave them things to think about because we we wanted them to really be on a journey that week. So, and Eric, you were there, so you heard us talk about the hero's journey, and that's really where this came from. Uh, again, English teacher. So there is a concept in in literature called uh, the hero's journey or the mono myth, and it was developed by a researcher by the name of Joseph Campbell, who started researching uh, stories from different cultures and different time periods, and discovered that although he was looking at stories coming from all the places all over the world and incredibly diverse time periods and cultures and and backgrounds that he was seeing the same parts of stories and the same steps of a journey over and over and over and over again. And that the hero always kind of starts out with this call to adventure. So we called them to adventure. There they were at KTI. They were there. We And then usually the hero refuses the call. There is a moment of self-doubt. Why me? Not me. No, wrong. <laughs> no, you have the wrong, not no, wrong person. Not me. Mm-mm. Find somebody else. And then they realize, oh yeah, okay, I got to do this. And they cross the threshold into the special world. So if you've if you've ever watched any, uh, you know, Lord of the Rings or Cat uh, Hunger Games or um, uh, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe or read any fantasy book ever, um, you probably are familiar with this pattern, right? Then they go and they find their their allies and they find their mentors and they face challenges and not everybody is on their side. And so we talked about, as we went through the week, who are your allies? Who are the people who are going to say no? And how are you going to overcome that? Who are your mentors? Look around. Who can you really connect with that can help you through this? Who might've gone something through, like, through this before? And then you, know, you approach the inmost cave when you go after your your big prize, but you have to do that because the cave you fear to enter, according to Campbell, holds the treasure that you seek. And so to get the treasure that you want, you've got to go through that inmost cave and you come out stronger, wiser, a new person. And then you go back to your home, your original world with the elixir, whatever magical potion it is that's going to save the day, whether that's a a new program, a new way of looking at things, whatever it is. And at each step, we ask them to think about questions that would lead them through these problems and help them think ahead so that when they did go back, if they encountered naysayers, they would be prepared. So I could not be more impressed with what they came up with. It was the best feeling in the world to walk around and hear a hundred educators talking about things that they were passionate about and changes they wanted to make and get so excited about it. It was phenomenal, phenomenal work and far exceeded anything I imagined. I was just excited people didn't boo me off the stage, really. I mean, it was great, (laughs) but yeah, so that that was a really long answer. I hope that's what you were looking for. Mm. Yeah, no, you you nailed it. I think too, like, uh, well, first of all, I'm all like fired up again. I'm like, oh, re-energized, all right, ready to go. Like, you know, that's like the PACD pep talk right there. Um, like our, our little virtual locker room here. And, um, but you know, like as you were talking, I'm thinking about seeing the faces and like, like the perplexed, like you talked about, like, do I cross that threshold? <laughs> I think there's what like, roughly a hundred people that they all were like, kind of have that same feeling off the back. And they're like, where's this going? Like, you know, and it was kind of like that brainstorm session, you know, just like, you know, what we have our children, our students do. And, mm-hmm. um, and we all know the adage, you know, teachers sometimes are the worst students and taking that step and doing that and, and, and being willing to do it. But um, it was so wild just seeing that transformation, even with them and that then when they did, and then like, it just like, it, it just started becoming what, what it became. Mm-hmm. And, and, and like you said, the stories that we have out of it, like it was, it was a pretty wild thing. Don, when you were there, you got there for one day. I know did by any chance, were you there when the P4 project was being done? I was there on Thursday, and I got there. They were in a group session uh, working on some of their projects, and it was pretty neat. A um, couple people from my region of Southwest, the one teacher had just moved to uh, kindergarten from teaching older students, and another member from my region was at a different table. Her project was getting people 
like newer kindergarten teachers and mentoring them and pairing them up with people. So we were able to connect those two and, mm-hmm. and get them together. And the project kind of folded together nicely right there at, at Summit. They were able to work with each other and move forward. So I caught the tail end of it. I wasn't sure exactly all the details of it. I know. Um, Karen, you gave a good backstory and filled that in, which I appreciate. You're, you're very welcome. I, I'm the flashback, you know, <laughs> three, month, three months earlier. Uh, yeah. So no, it was really, it was really neat to see how as projects sort of began to take shape because the lead learners were able to walk around and talk to different groups and, um, and kind of see the whole thing. There was a lot of, Oh, wait, you need to talk to over here. Exactly like you described. And sometimes it was another attendee and sometimes it was one of the lead learners. And sometimes it was, Oh, you need to tweet this person. Hang on. Let me give you a handle and, and things like that. So there was a lot of, a lot of collaboration. And, and one of the greatest parts about KTI, I feel is that we're all really amazing people. And, and I say that with all humility, but we are really, really amazing people. And you bring all these amazing people into a room and there is zero sense of competition. You know, it's, it's very different in the sense that we're not all fighting for the attention or the funding or the board approval or whatever. There's, there's no, there's no sense of competition. It is a spirit of collaboration from the minute people hit that campus. And it's just, year after year, such an incredible phenomenon to watch because you're like, well, how can this possibly keep happening? But it does. And and that spirit of collaboration was incredibly prevalent in the P4 project. Um, I loved, I loved watching it. There, the probably the, the, the moment where I got goosebumps was there was a, a gentleman there who had actually been thinking about retiring at the end of the school year and s- said to one of the lead learners that, because of this, my passion is renewed and I'm going to stick around for a while. And for something to have that much power is really, I'm getting them again, is really uh, just amazing and very, very humbling. Uh, It truly is. And, and, you know, and and the power in those stories, sharing those stories. And I think that's one of the things our goal is for tonight. Um, I believe we have um, some three excellent examples of Mm -hmm. a project that um, you've been in contact with and been working with. And, um, I believe, would you like to introduce our first guest speaker that's uh, going to share about their P4 project? Well, our first one is Brian Booker. Brian is a middle school social studies teacher, and he is going to talk to you about the project that he came up with. I know that um, he's got some some amazing things going and, and in the works. So I will let him give you some specifics, but bring him on. All right, here we go. Brian Booker, welcome to the pod. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you all for having me. This is this is really cool. Our pleasure, Brian. Awesome to have you here. Hey, it's only, we're only as good as our members. We're only as go- good as uh, the individuals who've gone through the process and shared their story. So tell us about your P4. Okay. So, I mean, starting going to KTI was like super overwhelming. Just like everyone is super excited. It was kind of that first big in-person event after the big pandemic. And no one really knew what to expect. And so that was really cool that like everyone could be together. Um, And when the P4 project started, I kind of didn't know what I was looking for. There weren't really rules or expectations. I'm like a big rule follower. So like I was looking for the rubric, I was looking for the guidelines and there wasn't anything, which at the time I like struggled over, but now I'm like, oh, that was probably the really the best thing. Uh, So I had a plan and I was like, yeah, I'm going to stick with this. I like this this will be good. And then I actually went to uh, Nicole Hill's drone presentation. And I thought that was the coolest thing. I've never thrown a drone. Be- I'd never flown a drone before. Uh, never really understood coding in that way. I knew it was a thing, but never really experienced it. And talking with her for a bit, I was like, this would be so cool to have in my classroom, but I can't figure out how to connect coding with social studies. Because I think at the secondary level, you have everything happening in silos. Everyone's very departmentalized and that integration across the departments is very rare. And that was my light bulb moment. I was like, what if we could find ways to code in the content and actually teach the content through coding? 
So I had this idea. Nicole was really super helpful. She actually tweeted at me today, just sending me different resources. So I'm really thankful for her. Uh, and so I sat down and I started messaging our tech integrators at my district. I started texting my principal, my content specialist. I was like, I have this idea. I'm at this conference. What do you think? And everyone kind of gave me the green light. So my project is finding ways to integrate coding and other STEM concepts into the social studies curriculum that we already have. Uh, so currently, uh, we just submitted a grant for a bunch of different Sphero and Ozobots uh, for our district's education foundation, which is really cool. That was really fun writing the grant. And we'll see, cross our fingers, hopefully that'll work. Uh, and the idea is to use the coding to teach the content. So for Ozobots, uh, one of the things that we teach about in our eighth grade US history course is how a bill becomes a law. And we go through the steps, we take notes, we play some iCivics games, which is really cool, but I don't know how meaningful that would be. And so one of the ideas is using Ozobots is to have the students create a map of Washington DC and code the process of how a bill becomes a law, filming it, narrating it. And then as the teacher, I throw in bugs of the codes. So that would be the presidential veto. You have a Supreme Court overruling an amendment and the students have to in real time recode their project to overcome different checks and balances. So it's showing uh, meaningful learning because students have to think on their feet, understand the content, understand how everything works. And they are naturally engaged in a 21st century skill. So it uses all the four C's and coding is a lifelong skill that we need to learn. And it wasn't until uh, the summit that I learned how to code. I remember one of the P4 sessions, I just sat there playing, oh, what's that coding game on the iPad? Oh, I'm blanking. Scratch? Um, it Scratch code. Uh, and it's the game with the little monster that you like, oh, move around. I can't remember it. Oh, goodness. It's okay. But I was, I was playing that through the entire session. And I know Missy came over and Missy, I felt like, oh, I got caught playing a game, but she was really encouraging. And I was like, oh, I understand how coding works. So right now we have a lot of different things in the works. Uh, we're gonna kind of replicate the, the uh, chariot race Olympics that we did at KTI. And I'm gonna adapt that to my ancient Greece unit and kind of turn that into a um, STEM project. I know we're looking at uh, obtaining Kiva planks to use uh, as an example for how to build the Great Wall of China. So analyzing China's geography, realizing there's a um, stretch of land that is unprotected. So they have to build a wall and then use a Sphero bot as an invader. So which wall is the strongest to kind of talk about the production and the building of the Great Wall of China. So I'm finding really interesting ways to use coding, to use STEM techniques to help students understand how ancient civilizations and people from a long, long time ago were able to build and create using the resources they had. So it's a, I think a meaningful learning experience to replicate historical thinking. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, I know Karen, you said like you felt fresh and renewed mm -hmm. and that's exactly how I felt walking out of there. Uh, and it was it was great just going back saying, I wanna write this grant, I wanna write this grant, I wanna use Goose Chase, let's do this, let's do this. And it was really good for the first part of the year uh, to, I don't know, just be reinvigorated after the 2020, 2021 school year where everything was so sterile. And now we're slowly coming back into more meaningful learning for our students. And that's really, what I valued from it. So, I mean, the next step for my project is seeing if these grants get approved and then go from there. Yeah, so you're you're right there. You've, you've got some tests in front of you. Will the grants get approved? But I have faith that you can still travel your journey. I do too, I do too. So I'm really excited. It was, it's, it was a great experience. Yeah, and can you, Dom, can you understand now why like I just walked out of there like, oh my gosh, because this is the type of stuff I was hearing and seeing every day and I'm like, ah! It's so amazing. That is. And that's one of the things, you know, you're throwing ideas at me because I'm also a social studies teacher. And that's the one part of, you know, getting the coding. There's other things we could do 
stem and steam, but not with the coating as easily. And, you know, that gets people thinking. And that's part of being a member of PAACT is building these networks, sharing these ideas, and then brainstorming together the collaboration. As uh, Karen was saying, it's not a, uh, not a competition, but more of a collaboration to move these ideas forward. So I will be like, picking your brain later. Oh, do it. To get some more information on this. And oh, it'll be great. I'm so excited. That's unbelievable. I'm back here like fist bumping, saying, oh, my word, that's awesome stuff. So thank you so much, Brian. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all you do. Your, uh, your students are very fortunate. Oh, thank right. you. So let's see here. Karen, I believe we are looking at our, I'm going to put you in the back room here, Mr. Booker. All right. So I believe we have another guest coming on. We're turning things over to elementary school now uh, with Tracy Andrews. So Tracy was an awesome person to watch at Summit because at one point she came over and sat down next to me and she's like, okay, so I'm wondering if this is, if I'm on, if I'm on the right track here, like, can I do this? And, and there were a couple of people who, who kept saying like, well, can I do this? Like, this is, this is an okay project for this. Yes, absolutely. It is. Um, and, and when we found out that she'd gotten all the green lights and sh she actually found that out at summit, like everybody said, yes, go. So uh, really excited to hear how things are going with her. So Tracy. Tracy oh. Andrews, welcome to the PACT pod. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for uh, having me on here. Uh, most definitely. Thank you for, for all you do for your students to advance ed tech and, you know, being a KTI star and being a, a PACT member. We appreciate it. So Karen talked about the things that, that you've been doing and, you know, we're so excited to hear about uh, the P4 uh, project that you did and, uh, you know, what you're currently doing with it. So we're going to let you take the stage. Here we go. Absolutely. Um, I loved Karen's, uh, Karen's lead in um, because I did run to her at least once, if not twice, trying to say, can I do this? Is that okay? Is this okay? Because kind of like how Brian felt, I was in the same place where we weren't given that, that formula, that guideline, that, that rubric, rubric to follow where it, it was just an open slate where we could do anything, which was a little unnerving to me at first. Um, but once I found out that I kept getting yeses, that the field was wide open to whatever I felt I could tackle, um, that was exciting to me. So where I started off with my P4 was exactly my goal of what I was hoping to get out of Summit. And that was being a relatively new first grade teacher. I wanted to know where I could fit technology into first grade with our primary focus being learning to read, how do I fit technology in here? Um, how do I fit computer science? How do I fit coding? How do I fit that kind of thinking in? Um, so that was where I started. I thought, okay, I'm, I'm in development. I went to my very first workshop that was all about, you know, literacy and computer science and coding. And all of my answers came from my very first workshop. And so when it was time to go back to the table at P4, I thought, okay, if we're working on this all week, I can't already have all of my answers. Um, so after about another 24 hours, all of a sudden I started thinking, um, I, I come from a, a school with a lot of, technology. We're, we're leaders in our area in technology, and yet I was the first person to attend KTI, the KTI Summit, and I was truly blown away by what was there. And I love technology, but I am not by any means the rock star in our school district. And all of a sudden, I started questioning, why am I the first person to have attended here? So now 
my, my, my plan shifted a little bit more into lead and I needed to get more and more people from my school to the KTI summit. Now, that is something that I have still, that I am definitely actively working on. In fact, I was speaking to a teacher about it after school today. Um, but what also came into play, so it was like a three-part plan for me, was by the end of the summit, I had decided that I wanted to um, make some significant changes to our K-2 coding computer science curriculum that we already had basically in line. So I would say about a week after the summit, I went straight to my superintendent to share with him everything that I had learned. And I, I mean, my, my energy level was so high that I, I, I just, everything came spilling out with, and, and we did this and we saw this and, and, and I saw that and they were doing this and they were doing this with, with kindergartners and we can do this and we can do that. And um, he was so excited by my level of excitement. He said to me, go for it. Whatever you want to do, go for it. Make that change. So we are working on grants for the things that I want. Um, I fought very hard to get Seesaw into our school. That finally, we got it all tied up and ready to go last Friday. So this week I'm working with my first grade team to unroll that in first grade this year so that I can get more people involved in you know, the, the coming years. Um, and what I'm basically trying to do is, first of all, lead by example. And second of all, change teachers thinking about coding because the word coding has really become a negative word in our school because teachers see it as something that takes away from reading, writing and arithmetic. And this is not what we need to be teaching our kids. And it's only on screen, you know, it's, it's too much screen time and we don't want to do this. And I am now really trying to come in and say, wait a minute, guys, this is a change in thinking. We need to get these kids really critically thinking, thinking about problem solving, working in teamwork. Look, I have this hands-on product, this hands-on project, this one, this one that you can do. You can do this right in your ELA lesson, right when you're teaching reading do your phonics lesson and then do this hands-on project and it's considered computer science and it ties right into this um and i'm i've got some people that are as excited as i am and i've got other people that are still fighting me on it no i don't see how that how that fits in and i but i just keep going and am hoping to make some very significant changes in our K-2 program, not only this year, but next year and the year after. Um, and it, I mean, Karen revival was a fabulous word, not religious, but I came out of teaching last year, wiped out. Didn't or wasn't quitting, wasn't retiring only because I'm not old enough and I can't afford to and all that other stuff. But I was burned out and didn't want to go back to school next this year. And after that week at KTI Summit, I couldn't wait to get back to school. I mean, I was so excited. I took two days to sleep and then the rest <laughs> of August. I was in school doing all kinds of stuff to get ready for this, um, bugging my, my teammates because I'm already thinking about new stuff and I'm emailing and I'm texting and I'm sure they wanted to tell me to go away. But um, this is, I mean, this just, it really got me excited again with a whole new purpose in, in this realm. You know, and I think that's one of the benefits that districts don't even realize they're going to get 
by sending people to KTI and you know the the fee to go is really really not expensive and so a lot of people foot the bill themselves so the district isn't even paying for it but for those districts right. who do um it the the benefit of having somebody come back with that energy and that enthusiasm and that renewed purpose is so so worthwhile yes. and and when you when you encourage other people to go and i love that part of what you're doing is getting more people from your district to be aware of of kti for those of you who are listening if you don't know any every principal in Pennsylvania is able to nominate somebody every year. So if you have 15 principals in your district, then 15 people can go from your district. They can be nominated. There's a selection process, but it's it's one of those things that if you have people there and then they come back and then, and then there's this camaraderie of, oh my gosh, KTI and yes, KTI. And then when the next person is nominated, I know this because we now do this in my building. The five of us who have been to the summit all like rush to that person's room and we're like, yay for you. And now <laughs> you need to go to summit. Um, so, but yeah, that, that enthusiasm is just infectious. And I'm so glad that your superintendent saw the value in that and is encouraging that. Um, maybe you can throw some money behind that, you know, yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, that's, that's absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm so, so happy that it's going well for you. It's very exciting. Thank you. Thank and if you, you, if you thank you for all the opportunities you gave me. Yeah. Oh, that truly from the bottom of my heart was my pleasure. And if you saw me glancing off the screen a little bit while you were talking, it's not that I wasn't paying attention. It's that I am trying to find the website. There are so many good things out there for storybooks with STEM. Like if, mm -hmm. you know, like here's the problem. How can the, how could the gingerbread man get away? Like right. what about a trap that you could build for the gingerbread man? So there's all sorts of really neat STEM projects out there that are not necessarily screen-based or device-based that are more, you know, found objects around the house. Recycling. Exactly. Empty your recycling bin because it's time for the STEM drill. Oh, I I have become I have become that that person that now hoards um, cardboard and extra pieces of cardstock and oh yeah. the packing material this is I mean it, it's insane but <laughs> I've got great ideas so yeah, yep. yeah that, awesome. that's a good resource library to build um, some of the schools around here do the same thing with different workshops and you know we're hoarding recyclables yeah I know I've taken cartons of coffee containers for both storage and for building different devices to different schools. Exactly. We go through a lot of coffee in school, so. Yes. <laughs> oh man, amazing stuff. Unbelievable. Great job, Tracy. Thank you so much for being here. I, you know, just sharing your story. It's so there's so much power in that and uh, just the different things that you're going and just uh, the true, you know, you can share like how it, it's changed you and everything you're doing. And it's so awesome. And you know what those people may be saying, you know, how oh, they don't want to hear from you, but they need to hear from you. you know what I mean, so keep it going. It's so powerful. Your students Thank deserve you. it. Thank you. All right. So, man, I'm, I'm like, I'm in the background fist pumping. I'm going, I'm just so excited. It's unbelievable. This, some, this is some good stuff. This is exciting, exciting information. So Brian kicked us off. Got us, you know, boom, I got the fist pump started. Tracy jumped in. Man, I'm like, ooh, I'm in the background, like, you know, going off camera so I'm not distracting everybody. So exciting. And I believe we're not even done with P4. We are what do not. we got, Karen? We are not. So our, our next guest is Amber Bowers, and she is in an interesting role because she is now an assistant principal at Commonwealth Charter Academy, and her project was a really – kind of different direction that is just, it's interesting in so many ways. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do not envy her right now. I'm, I, <laughs> we were talking and apparently they're enrolling like 200 plus students a day, new students at Charter, Charter Academy. So uh, yeah, our Commonwealth Academy. And uh, I do not envy the, the AP in that situation. So the fact that she has still had time to continue developing this idea is mind-boggling to me but amber you want to come on uh tell us more about that project all right amber bowers welcome to the Hi, amber. teapot how you doing hello thank you so much for having me can yeah. you guys hear me okay oh uh, yeah you're good i think um, uh as karen was talking i think you know don made that comment about a lot of coffee drinking i think we need to start sending some your way <laughs> yeah you well, know what's what, what, 
what's really awesome about your position and, and where you're working. Oh, she's got the KTI swag. And uh, um, what's really awesome about your position, I would say over the last few years, we've had different um, teachers, different positions where they're working with the cyber programs, they're working with charter schools. And I know I've had a lot of conversations where they're like, well, you know, PACT, KTI, it's only these type of schools. It's only these type of schools. And, and you know, I had several conversations about, you know what? No, it's not. I mean, are you working with kids? Are you changing their lives? Are you advancing ed tech in Pennsylvania? That's who it's for. So it's really awesome that you were there. And, and I am so interested to hear your P4 story. Awesome. Um, so for me, first of all, KTI, um, everybody's saying all of the things that resonate with me, but it refuels you. Um, it's very simply, I was, I was doing one of these like mind maps as, as we were, as you were talking, it helps me to concentrate. And like some of the words I wrote are purpose and refuel and support and excited and good people and just genuine goodness and just this feeling of everyone being there because we're passionate about education. So we're all very different, but we're just really passionate about that and it connects us all together. Um, so my P4 is called Edgy Vibes is the name. And since I'm a principal, the only reason why I was, normally you wouldn't apply as a principal. Normally you wouldn't get invited as a principal. But I was a teacher when I was invited and it was before COVID and it was canceled. And then I said, I still want to go. So I was kind of in a different realm when we started talking about P4. I was looking at it as how am I going to help the teachers? How am I going to help the people I supervise and the learners in a way that I didn't think of necessarily before, because I'm also across all of Pennsylvania right now. So I came from a brick and mortar school for 14 years and coming to this K-12 school across PA was totally different. Like, how am I going to reach all these people? So I love speaking and I love connecting and I love professional development. So my idea overall was how am I going to bring all that together? So through talking with all of the people that we were with, Edgy Vibes was created. The name came at three in the morning in the Shippensburg dorm. And I was texting who knows who on Twitter being like, what do you think of this? What do you think? My brain couldn't shut off. And now I'm at the point of I have a staging website. It's educators sharing stories with other educators. But it also connects you. So you go to the website when it launches in January. Right now I have a staging site and I have a submission form. And think chicken soup for the soul. So people are sharing one short bite-sized story that can inspire other educators. And then at the bottom of that story, it also shows you their Twitter handle. It shows you maybe their website or something to connect with them if you want to learn more. And it's um, organized by topic. So right now I've just been really curating a lot of the material, asking people if they're willing to share their story. Um, and each one I get is just honestly amazing. Each one I get gives me chills. Um, I've really been connecting with a lot of people. And one of the things Karen said was, you know, how are you doing this right now? But it's what fuels me. It's, it's really a passion. Like it makes me so happy to do it. And it's still within my field. I, I talk about it at work. Um, not, not, you know, all the time, but I have people at work who, who say, yeah, I'd love to submit, you know? So it's been a really great experience and I, it could go nowhere, but it could go somewhere. I have a photo shoot coming up and I spoke with Dave Burgess the other day who wrote, um, lead like a pirate and John Meehan submitted, um, so I'm getting, you know, at least responses, which is really 
awesome because people don't even have to write back to me. Like I'm reaching out on Twitter, you know, hey, I'm Amber. This is my, this is what I want to do. And um, it's motivating me. Uh, I'm, we're definitely still accepting submissions. Um, I haven't like posted it to, I, I could, I guess, just post it out there, but I didn't know how that would be taken. So right now I've been reaching out specifically to people. I've been reaching out at KTI to, to people who have inspired me. Um, and I really, it's for, when I say, it's for educational leaders, but I'm, I don't love saying that because I don't just mean admin. I mean, I mean, anyone leading within our system, anyone who wants to make a difference. When I say educational leaders, it's for adults. The stories are not for children. <laughs> it's for, it's adult uh, only. And people are sharing some really just heartwarming powerful, like either gives you chills, makes you tear up or makes you laugh. Like those are the requirements and keep it short so people can read it and um, share it, you know, with others and connect. So I feel like I'm talking on and on. So I'll stop. But that's what it's about. And I'm super excited. I am so excited for that to go live. I feel like every teacher everywhere is going to have that site bookmarked and it's going to be the one that you go to when you're like, oh my gosh, I just need something to tell me I'm going to be okay. And, and be get, get that like burst of adrenaline and that dopamine and, and just so, you know, be able to feel like I'm not alone. There are, there are other people out there who feel this way. And, oh yes, I remember why I love this profession. I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be pinned everywhere. That That's the hope. That's the hope and that it's convenient and that it's useful and that it's easy to navigate. And um, the hope is that when you're going, when you're, so I know for me, I will sometimes spend hours searching for the perfect 45 second video because it needs to be perfect. It needs to be perfect for, for the other people to believe in what I'm trying to portray or what we're trying to do as a whole. And the goal is that you could go to this website and look uh, by topic of growth or technology or something like that. It takes you to little tiles that have the quote by that person from their story. And the one, I don't know if you're like me, but when you when I go to something and I'm going through something or my, um, my teachers are going through something, I go, when I see a quote, I'm like, that's it. You know, one works and one doesn't. So the one that works, you click on it and then it takes you to the story. So I'm really trying to just have everything be as bite-sized and simple because our time is precious. A lot of us have families, you know, we have things to do, but at the same time, how great is it if you can find something that you can easily share with whoever's struggling to hopefully have a positive impact on them. And like you said, the struggle is there and it helps us to go, we're not alone. You know, we're not alone and, oh, okay, it does work or whatever it is. So I so just, Amber, I'm excited. If people want to, are excited hearing this and they want to check out your staging site, what is the web address for that? So the staging site itself, I feel like is kind of long. Um, I can put it in the chat unless you want me to just say it out loud or I don't know the best way to do that. Um, but it's edu- put it Go ahead. Put it in the chat. We could push it out um, through the site and get it on the screen. Yeah, because you're def you're definitely getting some love from our yeah. live viewers right now. So I think the I think they are social ready. Social media feed has some traction. People want <laughs> to contribute. Awesome. Yeah, and I and share it with you know anyone who you think would be willing to contribute. Um, I I shared the staging website, which uh, God bless. I don't know if I should say, but a friend from PAECT told me her daughter, her daughter would help me create my website. So what the tiny URL is the submission. So that's what's on the screen right now. That's the submission form. The other um, website will say Eduvibe Staging. 
and it's basically uh, you know the staging.com website. So the real website when it launches will be eduvibes.org, but I am not launching that until New Year's 2022. I'm not saying it's going to be at midnight, but I just felt like New Year, it's giving me time to curate content because I want it to look, um, it will be ever changing, but I want it to be complete, like enough so that so people can actually search for multiple topics um, when it comes out. That's great. That's going to be a great website to have. Thank My you. My heart is so full right now. Me too. Uh, yeah, that is awesome. That's so good. And, and and listen, in front of those listening, from everybody, I know I've got multiple DMs, and I'm I'm just slacking. I got to get on there. And I know Amber's been reaching out. And I know she's been doing a lot of things with a lot of people. So I definitely have to make sure I, uh, you know, get my my fingers in gear and get that information. So that's so cool. I love I love the way you described uh, the site. Like so so I'll ask you again. You talked about how. Um, like the pictures are with kind of the posts and it's like bite-sized nuggets that they can click on and what's going to speak to them. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, so what would, what made, what, what were your thoughts behind that design? So I just know that my mind uh, can't always focus on one thing or my intentions are good. I want to read the book. I want to, you know, watch this, do this, read this. And sometimes time is just hard. So when I go to a website, so one of my favorite websites right now is Edutopia. And honestly, I kind of found, I didn't really look at Edutopia all the time because I didn't realize how great it was. And when I started building my website, I started looking at other education websites and I'm like, oh, look at this one. Look at this. I'm finding all of these awesome websites that I never knew about before. But I liked um for Edutopia, for example, I like that it's very simple for me to navigate, that I can just search a topic and things will come up and they're always great. They're always great and they're relevant and they are um, have multiple ideas and I just like that. Um, my original thought process behind it what, at KTI, it really went from an idea to, well, what about this and what about this? And the great thing about KTI is that I could sit there and ask opinions and other educators would tell me yes or no, or what about this? Or what about that? If I came home and I wasn't at KTI and I said it to my husband, it means nothing to him. Like, I mean, he loves it. He loves that I'm passionate, but he's not in education. So like, woo, right over the head. Or he'll, he listens to all kinds of my crazy ideas. All the, he gets a lot of them. But this was the first idea that when I came from home from KTI and I was exhausted, somebody said about sleeping, I literally, I was bawling the last day. If anybody, in a, a happy, I was, I was like a child where I was so tired. I think I was just so tired and like mentally exhausted, but happy. I don't know. I was like emotional. It's like when I tell my children that they're tired and they're like, no, I'm not. Like that was me. <laughs> and I was just exhausted. I came home. And I said to John, like, I want to buy this domain. I like the name. And what do you think? Expecting him fully to say, okay, Amber, here's another one of your crazy ideas that you have. And he took it seriously. And he got me the LLC paperwork and we filled it out. And the fact that he believed in it helped. The fact that all of you believed in it People say you don't need validation, but I'm going to call BS on that because you validated me and it made me keep going. It made me keep going. See, now I'm going to get emotional. I'm not even tired. <laughs> but it so we get a crier down. I love it. It's good stuff. It did. So yeah, I just, and now I listen to all kinds of podcasts. I would like to be the Rachel Hollis of education. And if she's listening, let's do it, girl. Like, I'm in. I'm ready. So I'm just going to roll with it. And she said something on her podcast today. And it was something along the lines of, your dream should scare you. And if you believed you had double the potential that you feel you have, those are the actions you should be taking every day. 
And I was like, yes, I'm doing that right now. And I feel a little crazy that I'm thinking that this could go somewhere. But some of you on here, I guess, are validating that and makes me feel okay. Like I should keep going. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Wow. Yep. I, you know, and that, and that, that's what it's all about. Again, sharing the story. We're doing it here with the podcast. We do it at our events when we do them across the state. You're doing it with that website. You're sharing more, giving the voice to those that maybe don't have it. And, you know, it, it kind of mirrors some of what we try to do in the classroom a little bit too, you know, working with the kids. So thank you so much. So we're going to call all of our uh, guests on the, on the stage here uh, for our last. Let's see here. All right. We got everybody back on. So I just, I just personally want to thank you all for appearing on the PACT pod. It was, you know, PACT is an awesome organization. KTI is an awesome summit, but it, None of it would be what it is if it wasn't for our unbelievable members, um, our unbelievable educators that are just, you know, in the trenches day in and day out. So we truly thank you for all you're doing to uh, to advance ed tech, thanking you for what you do to, you know, um, reaching out to the, the kids that don't have the voice, reaching out to the kids that just need that hug, that high five, that fist bump, whatever it may be. We just, you know, keeping you and keep pouring out. It's so awesome. So thank you all so much. Any Any final thoughts there, Karen? I just, you know, that energy that you get at Summit is is amazing. There, there's nothing like it. Um, but being here tonight and getting to hear about the progress that the three of you have made in this and and that it actually has helped you. It, I mean, we're all in education. And so, you know, that moment where you look at a student and you're like, oh, my gosh, like you're 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 doing the thing and i feel like that right now and i'm also at the same time motivated to be like yes i need to keep going with my stuff too like yeah <laughs> so i mean it's it's this awesome awesome feeling and thank you so much for being vulnerable and open and sharing you know the, the struggles that you went through and and the path that you you've traveled and i am so very 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 excited to see where each of these continue to go. So thank you for being here and sharing. And thank you for trusting us when we said, hey, there's no rubric and no directions. Now do something. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry we disrupted you a little bit there. That's they're like, you wait, your language arts teacher up there? All right, what do you think, Dom? <laughs> um, you know, we're talking about the rejuvenation from the KTI Summit and the collaboration, but really you guys are the biggest takeaway. Um, you creating and adding to this network is what makes what's the strength in PACT and KTI. Because now your ideas coming out here and, and putting them out for everybody else, sharing these ideas, you're adding to the network. And there's people in the social media feed. We're getting messages that want to collaborate and, and uh, touch base with you guys. And your ideas are affecting them. And that's, I think, the biggest takeaway and the strength of the organization is this networking and every member being a contributor and pulling others along and helping lift everyone else up. So thank you. All right, awesome stuff. So uh, Amber at Edu Vibes LLC, um, anything other than, you know, working on this stuff, is there anything else on the horizon you got going on? Or, you know, you got a lot on the plate, but I wasn't sure how full that plate is. Anything else other than taking the podcast world on? What else you got? For, for me? Yeah, um, for you. I... I feel like I always have, like I said, I have a lot of dreams. I have a lot of dreams. I, I did apply for, uh, to speak at Pete and C. I, I, um, I guess I'll say that this is the first time I'm applying to be a presenter totally on my own, not on behalf of my, the school that I, that I work for, which I love. Um, not on behalf of my other district or my kids and their things, on behalf of me, on behalf of the passion that I have, on behalf of um, what I've learned in the past 14, 15 years. Um, and I guess it's a little scary because why do people care? Like sometimes it's like, well, why do people care what I think? But I think they do. And I love if you're telling me that you're going to care what I have to teach you, let's do it. Like, I'm so excited to um, possibly, you know, do this and be able to speak to people. It's my favorite part of being an assistant principal is I meet with, my, I call them my teachers, like our team. 
And I love that I'm getting to impact them, which in turn is impacting their, the learners, which in turn, and it's just so powerful. Um, I think showing value is extremely important. And I think right now our, our time in education, it's a weird time, but it's the time. Mm -hmm. It's the time. It's the time to make some changes. And I think we all know we're all going like this because there are some changes to be made. And, uh, you know, so I'm just excited. I have a lot going on, but I'm, I'm very excited. My daughter started making bracelets uh, that, that look like this. Oh, I don't even know where my, there you go. Where my thing is. <laughs> I like it. And, and she's creating edgy vibes bracelets. And um, really just kind of focusing on that whole uh, branding and marketing and creating a website. People are asking me how I'm monetizing it. The answer right now is I'm not. I'm not monetizing it. What is? What are people, you know, hopefully eventually that'd be great. But right mm -hmm. now, let's just support each other and share. I will say that I, awesome. my most recent awesome thing was... Um, her name is Scarlett Lewis. She created a free, it's going to make me tear up. She created a free SEL movement called Choose Love. Her son was um, killed at Sandy Hook. And her only thought, not her only thought, I shouldn't say that, but her, um, she's so amazing that she decided to create a Choose Love movement because what would make the shooter do something like that? If that's not powerful, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what is. And she said she would write a submission. And that to me was really, really powerful. So, Very cool. so I'm Very exciting. Cool. Yeah, no, that's awesome. All right, we're going to go in reverse order. Tracy, uh, so we got at Tracy Teach one uh, What do you have on the horizon? What, what's your next steps? Uh, I have so much that I have to rein myself in. Um, basically, what is first and foremost right in front of me is getting Seesaw up and running. Um, it's the one thing that's been brought into school that our tech department knows nothing about. So I have been, in, been put in place as the administrator. I will be the go-to person. Um, so I'm working on that. My long range goal, which I've already been given permission to start when I want, would be a makerspace and or robotics club in the elementary school. So I'm just trying to, to not bury myself in things. Sure. Hey, Lee, we got a Lee learner right up the alley with the seesaw stuff. I know I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure everyone's was thinking the same thing I was. That's awesome. All right. All right. Saving the best for last. Brian, what do we got? So we got at social studies BB for Brian Booker. What do you got on the horizons, man? Hopefully a nap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. But in the meantime, uh, I think my big goal is shaking the stigma of departmentalization of learning. We know, and we've all grown up with learning in the different departments and mm -hmm. that's not how the real world works. And through like my P4 project of coding and content, that is just one step in the direction to teach students that everything you learn in school is related. It goes back to the four C's. It goes back to um, social emotional learning. And if we can find ways to shake down those silos, I think we will leave the world in a better place than we started. So after the nap, I'll tackle that. <laughs> but first, yeah. all right, I like that. But first, my name. Right, well, thank you all so much. We really, truly appreciate you uh, being here, and uh, you have a, a great rest of your evening, and uh, good naps. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, Karen. Oh, my word. Oh, she bopped out. Okay. All right. Well, it's you and me, Dom. How you doing, man? You excited? Good. You filled up? What do you think? Oh. Definitely. And you know how hard it is to keep me quiet and there wasn't much for me to say because I was listening to everybody and their stories were excellent. I mean, the ideas they were pushing out, 
in my head, I'm like the hamster wheel spinning and I'm coming up with like putting things like, okay, with things I need to start thinking about and moving forward with in my classroom. And, uh, you know, it was definitely four great guests tonight. Ah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. It just, it was, it was just snowballing of excitement. It was really cool. Um, so on the bottom here, I have, you know, our PACT regional spark page. we got a lot of things going on with PACT and to take it to the tech side. So we're going to give you some, uh, uh, tech notes, tech tips. So Dom, what do you have for us? What are you going to talk about tonight? Um, an oldie, but a goodie. I kind of forgot about it last year during the pandemic with everything going on, but, uh, quizzes, which is free. And I use that for reviews with my students. They have a template. If you just Google quizzes template, it'll pop up template, fun quiz quizzes. And you could actually have the students type into a Google Doc, or not a Google Doc, um, Google Sheets, or Excel if you're a Microsoft 365 school, Excel sheet. And it they type in the information. It's all pre-coded for you. They type in where they have to type in, copy, and upload that right into quizzes, and it will make um, quizzes review games so the kids can, the students can actually contribute to their own learning and be part of the process by recommending questions and such uh, to the oh, review. Awesome. So I rolled that out with my, my students. I forgot about that over the last year and I started it again with my students as an enrichment project and they're starting mm-hmm. to jump into it. So something that's oh. moving forward. That's cool. Yeah, I've used it. I didn't know actually about that template thing. So I just learned something, writing it down and uh, just got a social media and I'm pretty sure this was for our P4 people. You know, we could take credit. You know, she's proud of us too. But <laughs> President of PACT, Nicole Hill, posted to everybody, the P4 Project crew. Uh, so proud of them. I mean, really, truly, that's awesome. So I just wanted to make sure that she got that shout out with that that comment for them. They did a great job. So I'm going to I'm gonna kind of like uh, jump, you know, jump off of the, the P4 Project because, you know, when we send the information home of what our KTI Summit attendees need to bring, there's different things they need to bring. You know, your, your dorm essentials, make sure they got their, don't forget your pillow your sleeping bag, your, your, your covers, all that jazz, extra long, uh, you know, extra long uh, uh, bed uh, topics because the, the bed sheets, the college dorms are just different these days, Tom. It's not like back in the day when you and I were going. So it's all kind of crazy. And uh, but one thing we kind of put in there, we snuck in this thing about, you know, this like we were a hidden message about a tablet. And so my feature is something that I'm, I'm I jokingly say in all of our, whether it's ed camps or regional meetups, I talk about my my addiction to a little company called Rocket Book. Uh, and uh, friction pens, man, that's one thing that works with these rocket books. And, I, you know, I try to get them for even for my daughter's teachers, um, I, you know, give them as their Christmas gifts or end of the year gifts. I, you know, everybody loves a good friction pen. And then for uh, the summit, we were able to actually secure a great deal uh, on the book for the, the rocket book. And um, every attendee got one. So we were able to, through our sponsorships and through our donations and things of that nature, we were able to give every educator a P4 or, um, that to, to use for the P4 project, a rocket book. And the cool thing about rocket book is you write on it. It's erasable. You take a picture. It works with the app. So you can automatically file things in drive, send stuff to my love. There's a little purple one note cape back there hidden uh, to my one note love. So it automatically kicks over there. And um, so love using that. And then even for, you know, Karen or Karen popped on a little note there about rocket book friction friends, but I know her hubby has a love for fountain pens. And I even love the fact that I can get the paper copy of the rocket book and use my fountain pen on it. So it doesn't even have to be the friction pen. I can still use um, that fountain pen. You and, and teachers can go onto the website, print off the papers to be able to utilize. You can kind of, um, for a while there, I was using my whiteboard kids were writing for the whiteboard. I was taking the black outline and using the code snippets at the bottom. And they then the, uh, uh, part, didn't but, interrupt. They have the beacons you can put, they're cheap. Put them on your whiteboard or any surface. Yep. I use the beacons in my class, and I love the paper because you got me hooked on fountain pens. So I use the, the uh, <laughs> paper for the fountain pens with with the rocket book. Yep. Well, I'm not gonna lie. When that came out, I w- we were we were getting ready for KTI a few years ago, um, and Karen saying free. They give the papers to print for free. I didn't yeah. say that. That is correct. Um, all sorts of sizes of things you can go on their website and get. It's awesome. Um, but I was actually, I, I did my little hack and I was using it in my classroom. And then they came out with that, their beacons and they were so much better, but I was so mad. I was like, they were listening. They somehow knew what I was doing, Dom. They do. They heard. And I didn't get a cut of it, but that's okay. <laughs> no, awesome stuff. So, so yeah, a lot of cool tech tips. Uh, we're going to be looking at doing a lot of different things. Um, as, we're, as we're closing up here, Dom, any final thoughts here for the evening? 
No, uh, just keep checking the PACT website. I know Southwest, we have a big event coming up in November. I'll be putting that information on the website here within the next few days. Check it out. It's a free event for members. It's going to be a bigger event. Um, you know, hopefully everything stays okay, so things stay open. But we're planning on doing a, a bigger meet and geek at one of the local schools. Yep, and make sure you use the bit.ly. Remember, bit.ly forward slash and the capitalization is important. It's capital P-A-E-C-T and then lowercase events. So anytime you go there as we do different things, putting on about the podcast, putting on different events all across the state, and we even have an out-of-state organization. That's on there. We have KTI chat. So anybody who is a KTI member or wants to go to KTI Summit, they, they kind of connect there. There's an out-of-state um, Twitter chat. So it's awesome stuff. A lot of stuff going on. And it was alluded to Pete and C. I do have a feeling that we might have to talk about PNC in an upcoming PACT pod Definitely. because that's a big time coming up. So uh, right now we'd like to give a shout out to all of the corporate council members for PACT. We truly appreciate uh, their patronage, the um, they're sponsoring us and they're working with us. And we'd like to show a little video right now. And truly thank you to those uh, corporate council members, those sponsors. And uh, you can catch us on YouTube, on Facebook, the third Thursday of every month. You can also check us out on, I believe we're on Anchor, aren't we, Dom? Anchor, um, Apple Podcasts. We're across a whole bunch of podcasts that works. Check us out. Uh, like, subscribe, download. Oh, speaking of which, how uh, corporate council members support PACT. We have the Amazon Smile, so members and others can support PACT, so we continue doing things like this, help with the KTI Summit. All of this helps and builds this network, makes us stronger, so please support us any way you can. Most definitely. Leave you with these final thoughts. You know, heard this quote one time, and, I, and you know, bring all you are to all you do. It's all you'll ever need. Thank you so much for being a member. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Have a wonderful Friday, and have a great weekend. We'll see you guys next month. See you, everybody. Take care. Take care.